Second Timothy chapter two. And verse twenty four. And the Lord's bond servant must not be what? Quarrel. Quarrelsome, quarreler, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wrong, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. Why? If perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Wow. Amen. You realize that many times when people are arguing with you, they, they don't, they're throwing up those smoke screens, they seem to be blinded and so on, but they're actually being held in the snare of the devil. Mm. Jesus said to Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What are the keys? The keys is the gospel message. It's the, it's the message of life in Christ. That's the, those are the keys. And he says, um, he said, the, and then he's, and then the Bible says that the gates of hell, Jesus said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What are the gates of hell? The gates of hell are what keep people enslaved in the snare of the devil. And we take the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the gospel, and we unlock the door and we let people out. We free the captives. The captives are free as we share the gospel and they understand it. The devil doesn't want them to understand it. So there are, there are smoke screens. There are doubts that they're thrown into people's minds. And so what are we going to do? Well, be respectful. Be kind. Be patient. In other words, be pleasant. He says, be kind. Mm -hmm. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. So be pleasant uh, and kind with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. Be prepared. Be patient. Be peaceable. And be purposeful. That perhaps we might free those who are being held in the snare of the devil. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay, then there are basic attitudes in handling objections. Be ready. Be respectful. Let's talk more about that. those attitudes. One, avoid arguing. Never, ever, ever argue. Too often you'll win the argument and you'll lose the gospel. You'll lose the person. You won't be able to share the gospel. You'll get involved in arguments. It's a sidetrack. It's a tool of the devil. One of the best ways to prevent an argument is to preclude it. In other words, answer an objection before they raise it. All right? When we, just the way the gospel, uh, our, our, um, our outline is designed is there to help preclude certain objections. What do you think the objection, uh, what objection do you think is precluded when we say, may I ask you a question? Permission. We're asking permission, mm -hmm. and we're precluding the objection, I don't like people shoving religion down my throat. Mm -hmm. May I share with you, well, I shouldn't say, may I share with you what the Bible teaches, right? They give you permission, you're precluding that objection. I don't like people shoving religion on me, right? Or I'm not comfortable talking about religion. That's an objection that comes to people's minds. But we preclude that by gaining permission to ask the question. And so there are, there are a number of things in the outline that help us preclude possible objections. Um, talk about that again in a minute. So basic attitudes. Show a positive attitude. You can meet an objection with a positive attitude by saying, hey, I'm, I'm glad you called that. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, that's a good question. That's a good point. Uh, you can pay a sincere compliment. The prospect to whom you are speaking begins to become irritated. A sincere compliment can be very effective in reducing tensions. You know, I, that's that's a great question. Good point. Again, it's kind of the same thing, you know. Encouraging them. And um, don't entertain, by the way. Don't entertain. If you're training someone 
and uh, you come across a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness, you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather set an appointment and go back and talk to that person than to try to deal with that person with my two trainees. Mm -hmm. Even if I can do a great job, even if I think I'm going to do a great job with this Jehovah's Witness, because you're not going to win any arguments right away, usually. <coughs> it's going to be a, a conversation over a period of time, right? You're going to build a relationship with that person. And even if you do a great job and you answer some, you're, you know, you're really brilliant in this stuff, yeah. your two trainees are standing there going, wow, I hope that never happens to me. I, I could never do what he does or what she does. Mm -hmm. You know, and so what you're doing is really you're making them more afraid than 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 giving them courage. <laughs> you're doing just the opposite, right? So give them a break and uh, give yourself a break as well. I was at home one day and I uh, had the knock at the door. Tell me about it. I was studying the Book of Acts. I was preaching through the Book of Acts actually, and um, and so there were uh, two Jehovah's Witnesses, and God just gave it to me. It was it was so awesome. <laughs> I said, hey, well, I'm a JW. And they go, you are? They know who the JWs are in their neighborhood, right? <laughs> so I'm a JW. You are? I said, yeah. Turn to Acts 1 8. They turned to Acts 1 8. I said, you shall be Would you my read witness. that to me? Uh, yeah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses. witnesses. Well, stop. Mm. Whose witnesses? Who's speaking there? Um, uh, uh, Jesus. Who's speaking there? Um, uh, uh, I said, well, my Bible, it's red letters. <laughs> isn't, isn't Jesus the one who's saying that? Uh, yeah, I guess so. And Jesus is saying, you shall be my who? My what? Witnesses. My what? Yeah, I'm a JW. I'm a Jesus witness. <laughs> <laughs> and I just happen to know that, um, at that time, I don't remember exactly where it is now, in Isaiah, it's 43. Let me see. Oops, Isaiah. Isaiah. Is it 43, 8 or something like that? Where it says, I am Jehovah. No one like me. There are no other gods. You are to be my witnesses. Jehovah says that, right? And at that point, I was able to show them where it was and compare it with, with uh, Acts 1 8. And if Jehovah says we're to be his witnesses, and in your same Bible, Jesus says we're to be his witnesses, who is Jesus? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> it's like pretty obvious, right? The G J Jehovah is Jesus. That Jesus is Jehovah, and we're to be his witnesses. So I'm a JW too. So. Anyway. I went, thank you, Lord. That was pretty cool. Um, so, sincere compliments and let's talk about some methods for handling objections the very first thing you do when you encounter an objection is pray right? mm. with your eyes open, with your eyes open. Uh, what's the shortest prayer in the Bible Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> it was Peter he actually was walking on water and he starts to look at the waves and it, and I think it was the last second, you know, because that's how we are. We pray the last second. And so when he said, Lord, save me, I think it kind of went like this. Lord, save me! <laughs> you know? Lord, save me. It's one of those prayers. And so you hear the, the, the objections come in. You go, okay, Lord, save me here. <laughs> how many of you have prayed that prayer? Right? Yeah, right in that situation. And uh, someone read Psalm 121, 1 and 2. Yes. Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God, you made heaven. You made earth. You made everything. You can make words come out of my mouth. <laughs> you can give me the wisdom right now that I need, right? Doesn't James say, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him, right? Amen. But not like the surf of the sea driven and tossed here and there with doubt. Pray, ask God, and he'll give it to you. Um, secondly, we, and this is what we mentioned earlier, and that is preclude. Um, pray and then preclude any objection you possibly can. And in precluding, in your book it says, this means answering objections before they're raised. 
The EE presentation is designed to help in precluding a number of object objections. That's too personal. Religious things are too personal. Well, you've asked permission. I don't like people cramming religion down my throat. You've asked permission to share. I've always believed that. You get to the end, you know, and you say, uh, so remember when I asked you that question, um, I asked you, uh, or you get to the end and they say, saving faith is trusting Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. Oh yeah, yeah, I've done that. Uh, but remember when I asked you that question in the beginning, I, I said, what would you say to God if he said to you, why should I let you in my heaven? Remember what you said? Uh, good person. Remember you said, because I'm a good person and I try my best and and I'm kind to other people, and I give money to the poor, and I, who's that revealed perhaps you were trusting and you're trusting? I, 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 I. And so it helps you preclude that objection that, oh, no, that's what I, that's what I believe, that's what I believe. Well, not really. And then postpone. Someone asks you a question, uh, you can postpone it, especially if you know that it's gonna come up in a, in a future point, right, in the outline. And uh, until later in the presentation, or you can postpone it until after the presentation. You know, that's a great question, but you know, I asked if we could share what the Bible teaches about how a person can know for sure we're going to heaven or not. And that question about David and Goliath, that really Goliath is going to kind of take us off. Now, we can deal with that later, but could I just finish what the Bible teaches about how you can know for sure you're going to heaven? And if that's still a question you want to talk about later, we can do that. Would that be all right? Mm -hmm. I've never had anyone say, no, I want to deal with it right now, you know. You just promise to, to uh, come back and you postpone. Or you promptly answer the question, right? If it's a question that you can answer, you should answer it. And that's where Peter said, be prepared, be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you. And so um, there are... Let me see here if I can do this. Let's see, where was it? Maybe I didn't keep it. That's not it. That's not it. Huh. Okay, well, anyway, in, um, in the EE store, get on eeworks.org. Um, go into everyday evangelism, and there's a book called Reasonable Answers for Honest Skeptics. And I wrote that book to give simple ways to remember the answers to the common questions people bring up. Like uh, we did that last night, we did that with, um, with Harry. He said, well, I'm not sure I believe in God yet. Yet, you know? Mm -hmm. So we talked and talked and then came back to, um, to the answer. Why? And I said, well, you know, I can, exp I can share with you why I believe in God. And that's what you do. You, you, if someone wants to argue, you don't want to argue with them. And so you say, you know, I'm not going to try to convince you against your will, but if you like, I can share with you why I believe. And so I shared with them. C-O-D-A, CODA. I believe in God because of C, creation. You know, someone created that shirt that you're wearing there. I know there's a creator. You know, it's a, it's, there's, a, there's a creation, there's a creator. You know, oh, order. Uh, if you see 10 Coke cans lined up on top of a fence, you know there's an orderer. Someone ordered those. That didn't just happen by itself, right? Mm -hmm. C-O-D, design. Gotta look at this building, there's a design. There's a, there's a design. Obviously, if there's a design, there's a designer. Just these tiles and top this in the ceiling, right? It's a design. There's a designer behind it. It didn't happen by itself. C-O-D-A, art. You know, I look at a painting and there was there was a picture on the wall. I said, there's an artist. There's art, there's an artist. It tells you that there's an artist, right? I, and I look at the universe around me and I see the most beautiful sunsets, the most beautiful art I've ever seen. I assume there's an artist behind that. Or I look at the order in the universe, or the order in the human body, you know, the, the DNA, the string, strand, strands of DNA that we have. I mean, that's some order there, right? That didn't happen just by itself. Or the, or the, um, the universe itself, you know, galaxies and solar systems, there's order there. It didn't happen just by itself. Um, and then design, yes, or CO, that was the order. Design, mm -hmm. art, building, you know, and then, then uh, creation. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at this beautiful creation 
there's obviously a creator behind it. That's why I believe